Good evening everyone, it's brother Darren, Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16. So I've come across this article, uh, it's on The Guardian, and it's in reference to food provision by a local woman in Zimbabwe. Um, it's a very recent article. I think I might find a date here. So literally today, Wednesday the 20th of May 2020. And um, what is this This lady, Samantha uh, Murazoki? Um, it says she's bartered her jeans and sneakers to stop the food running out, inspiring others to pitch in. And it seems like a fairly decent humanitarian type of, of article um, you know this local woman doing the done thing uh, that needs to be done for a community fighting for them says down here she's providing porridge and so on and so forth and um, it's not the exact article that I wanted to look at but what I'd notice is I've been doing a bit of studying um, just looking into things as far as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, you know, the vaccines, um, and this this whole drive um, and, and funding that seems to come from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But I noticed uh, that this article um, is sponsored by or endorsed by. Uh, Global Development and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now, it recently came to my knowledge that the Guardian are uh, sometimes financed or supported or funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And um, I just found it strange to find this um, endorsement direct on this article um, because it doesn't even say what they're doing to kind of help this, this lady out in particular. Um, now I clicked on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and it simply just drove me through to this page to, uh, so you can see the authenticity. I'm not agreeing to any cookies because don't want any, uh, tracking as far as this is all concerned, but you know, to go back to the original page for the article, um, I was quite interested as to what global development is and how it connects for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So, you know, I simply went uh, global development, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and came across an article here on the Gates Foundation which says, the following the guardian launches global development website with gates foundation bill and melinda gates foundation and it says this the guardian today has launched a new website in partnership with the bill and melinda gates foundation to help focus the world's attention on global development the site will provide a new space for discussion and interaction on the biggest challenges affecting the lives of billions of people across the developing world, including poverty, hunger, infant mortality, adaptation to climate change and economic development. Now, of, of course, as we know, there is a furor and a massive debate going on and some facts that have come up in regards to vaccines and, um, you know, how nefarious they may be in the history of them as far as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are concerned, uh, views on population control or depopulation, eugenics, so on and so forth. But um, in going through this article, uh, what I found quite interesting was uh, a link to the United Nations. And what it says is, says here is one of the aims of the websites, which launches, which launched just a week before a major UN summit, surprise, surprise, 
is to hold governments, institutions and NGOs accountable for the implementation of the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, which 192 countries signed up to into 2000. Huge advances have been made with many of the MDGs and the new site will enable people around the world to better monitor how each country is performing. Okay. So I was interested in these Millennium Development Goals, so I just wanted to see what they were uh, from the United Nations. Um, so we go Millennium. Well, that's quite interesting there. Um, you can see the infographic there with the eight Millennium Development Goals. And it says they are to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, achieve universal primary education, to promote gender equality and empower women to reduce child mortality, to improve maternal health, to combat HIV, AIDS, malaria and other diseases, to ensure environmental sustainability. And that's in connection uh, with the World Health Organization, which is also in connection with the United Nations. So I've gone on to the United Nations uh, Millennium Development Goals and see if I can zoom it out a bit. And it says that the goals, the eight goals, which range from halving extreme poverty rates to halting the spread of HIV AIDS and providing universal primary education all by the target date of 2015, form a blueprint agreed to by all the world's countries and all the world's developing institutions. They have galvanised unprecedented efforts to meet the needs of the world's poorest. The UN is also working with governments, civil society and other partners to build on the momentum generated by the MDGs and carry on with an ambitious post-2015 development agenda. Now if we look over here to the right, we can see the eight uh, development goals, Millennium Development Goals that are supposed to be in place. And the one that I was, I mean, most of them, when you read through them on the surface, they sound like, you know, good universal, you know, global uh, goals and objectives to meet. Um, but from a, a spiritual perspective, from a biblical uh, prophetic perspective, Number eight stuck out to me because the Bible says, in effect, um, you know, there will be a, a new world order or a one world type of order that kind of comes into place uh, as we advance towards things in the end times or for eschatology. So if we click on number eight, global partnership for development. Uh this is uh, goal number eight. And let's read the goals quickly and then I'll go to go to target eight dot F, which is the one that yeah again sounded a bit of a bell for me. Uh, so eight A develop further an open rule based predictable non discriminatory trading and financial system. That's interesting. eight uh, B Address the special needs of least developed countries. 8C. Address the special needs of landlocked developing countries and small island developing states. 8D. Deal comprehensively with the debt problems of developing countries. Uh, 8E. In cooperation with pharmaceutical companies, provide access to affordable essential drugs in developing countries. Now, that one I find interesting from a one world order or new world order perspective because the more people that you medicate is the more forms of identification you would need, um, especially in the developed world, the, develop, uh, the underdeveloped world or the developing world, we might say third world. Um, you know, if you're treating people for any types of sicknesses or maladies, um, they're from pretty rural areas, you're going to want them to 
have ID to fit into the system. So it's it's quite funny how that, that's all working in sync and in tandem. Um, AF, in cooperation with the private sector, make available benefits of new technologies, especially information and communications. So that's the really interesting one for me because um, biblically, you know, uh, Revelation chapter 13 says we'll get to a time where you won't be able to buy or sell uh, unless you have a mark. But the only way that could happen on a global scale is if third world countries are brought up to speed or up to scale as well, as much as possible. So it's, you know, it's almost a bit of a coincidence that we have via world health or world poverty we have poorer nations developing countries being brought up to speed via uh, you know health requirements or medicinal requirements or vaccines and so on and so forth so that their life would be you know most people will be in the system so to speak um so that was quite interesting as i said so if we go into AF a little bit uh, more, it says globally, the proportion of the population covered by a 2G mobile cellular network grew from 58% in 2001 to 95% in 2015. So that's a massive shift. Okay. But let's look at the next one. Internet use penetration has grown from just over 6% of the world's population in 2000 to 43% in 2015. 3.2 billion are linked to a global network of content and applications. Now that's really interesting. I mean, that's two, 2015. I'm sure that the global network has grown more from since then. So the percentages would be higher. The need or the drive or dem the demand for technology or uh, global internet use and digital IDs is being is being driven and you know we have someone like Elon Musk who's launched hundreds of satellites into low earth orbit to give global satellite coverage which has never been done before, or, you know, on a very unprecedented scale. So all of these things just seem to be converging. And it's just really, really interesting. But let's have a look at something else. I'm going to go to a, a United Nations video uh, on what they're saying about development of... Um, sort of global internet which would you know really allow at least for greater capacity or, or the ability for some of these developing nations to be where they, they need to be as far as you know being digitally ready uh, for something like the mark of the beast so let's have a look Okay, so this is the United Nations, and I guess this is a panel that they had. Um, I believe it's at Davos in Switzerland. It's three months ago, and it's talking about artificial intelligence. But one of the speakers speaks, and he just talks about essentially where these developing nations, or if he doesn't, hint directly at them at where the rest of the world needs to be as far as being digitally ready um and yet again that might be towards the um capability to be digitally ready for something like the mark of the beast but let's listen to the sdg media zone live from davos 
for Switzerland. We're broadcasting live on UN Web TV. Thank you all for, for tuning in. We have a panel here to talk about digital connectivity, uh, the UN Broadband Commission, and also AI for good. Um, we have here Mr. Hulin Zhao, the Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union, ITU. Um, we have Philip Metzger, who is from the Federal Office of Communications of Switzerland, uh, Director General. And in the middle, Ms. Kandal Parmar, CEO of Untapped AI. So we'll start off with the UN um, Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development, which was uh, is an initiative of uh, ITU and, and UNESCO, and is really here to boost internet access, um, uh, in particular broadband networks. Now, we're still seeing about 3.6 billion people um, offline today. And how is the commission working to get these people online? What's the latest uh, initiatives and, and uh, news coming out of the commission, uh, Mr. Zell? Yeah, uh, this is a very uh, fundamental issue for the digital society. If we do not have the people connected online, we cannot talk about the benefit of uh, digital society. Uh, viewing the importance of uh, digital connectivity. So I just paused that now because he said, you know, it's very important. Uh, if we do not have people connected online, um, they're not where they need to be. And we can't talk about the benefits of a digital society, which will be a global society, as prophesied in Revelation chapter 13. Ability, uh, for the future. ITU and the UNESCO uh, jointly set up this uh, UN Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development uh, in 2010. So this year we celebrate our 10th anniversary. I'm very pleased to note that uh, our commissioners, which uh, come from all over the world, from industry, from government, uh, from regulators, from uh, NGOs, uh, we, we come together to address the challenges and uh, opportunities. And we are very pleased that this afternoon we just have a very special session jointly organized with the WEF to talk about the current challenges and the current opportunities. And the current challenges, as you mentioned, we still have almost half population not connected online yet, no matter how hard we... Yeah, again, we almost, we still have half, half the population which is not connected online yet. We worked uh, in the past. Uh, we already, you know, provide uh, new technologies such as Internet of Things, you know, big data, 4G and 5G to those people who connected. But we still have half population not connected online yet. So this is a big challenge. And we, this afternoon, you know, raised this issue to our commissioners. And they give us very good advice. And we focused on several issues. For example, we talked about meaningful digital connectability, meaningful. We also talked about, uh, you know, the financial, digital financial mechanism. And we talked about uh, good environment, uh, attract uh, uh, investment from uh, public and from private. And as Secretary General of ITU, myself, I put uh, four eyes on my priority. So that was very important. You know, he said that they've talked about investment from both the public and private sector as far as getting uh, the rest of the world, the half of the world that is not online, currently online. And, you know, um, that to me is a very ominous sign, uh, a sign of, of what I'd call, at least, Bible prophecy fulfillment uh, in regards to needing to have a you know, global, uh, a global equality across all nations um, for them, yet again, to have the uh, the capacity and the readiness um, for something which can come in, which can be as systematic as the mark of the beast, you know, which literally the Bible says it's, uh, I think it's in verse 16, Revelation chapter 13, uh, mark of which you will not be able to buy or sell without. Now, whether that is a form of digital identity or some form of um, 
verification digitally on a system or whether it is actually some form of payment processing like the RFID chip or whether it's just the online capacity to kind of incorporate everything such as is, is being developed uh, via Elon Musk and Neuralink, the implantable brain chip, I'm not sure. But one thing I do see is an ever-increasing move uh, towards the right components uh, that need to be in place for the f fulfillment of Bible prophecy as this is all concerned and it all being done um, via many various organisations, both public and private global sectors and when you see the synthesis or the unison throughout all of these different organizations uh, and the fact that say for example the World Health Organization um, and France have been so against I believe it was Madagascar for them developing uh, a possible remedy for COVID-19 you start to see the types of of figures um you know as as a whole composite that might make up the beast from a uh, revelation chapter 13 or at least the new world order as it's pushing towards that anyway um some food for thought there and you know, I, I encourage people to seek the Lord whilst he may, may be found. I do see the fulfillment of Bible prophecy coming true. And, you know, institutions or organisations that are working towards this, that are in ad ad adversity towards God, um, will be judged outright. And we're looking at the formation of a system for people to be compliant and subservient to the um you know looking at the covid-19 it's created the type of conditions and needs um for people to depend on or rely on a world system possibly a world government and a particular world leader maybe that has these answers and Yet again, bringing the rest of the world that is lagging behind up to speed. Because um, the Bible does say that anybody that takes the mark literally will be damned. And I've already just identified previously that if you read Matthew chapter 24, um, the Lord is trying to spread the gospel and let as many people hear it as possible and receive of salvation and accept Jesus Christ and be saved from the second judgment you know hell the lake of fire I won't hold back on my words but the devil is obviously he has his plan so to speak because if you read Revelation chapter 12 and I believe Revelation 13 it talks about the dragon it's the great dragon that empowers this beast and this is what we can see taking place without a shadow of a doubt in my mind and people have to be able to come to the decisions or conclusions as who they're going to trust in and trust on and believe in and, and rely on the bible in um, several portions of Isaiah talks about the Lord declares things from the beginning to the end and this is how you shall know that he is the true God and secondly the prophecies for the messiah jesus christ they literally have to do with eyewitnesses where god not only does he judge sin but he proves eternal life resurrecting his son after death to assure you that there is a another life to go on to and an eternal life in righteousness that you can have with God and be saved. So I encourage everybody to seek the Lord, make a personal decision with him as your saviour. And, uh, you know, I'll keep posting and sharing what I can. 
you know, um, accept the Lord as Savior, find a good church, read your Bible, turn away from sin, trust God. There are trials, temptations and obstacles, but he promises never to leave us or to forsake us. And fellowship with other Christians, learn to strengthen yourself and turn away from sin and understand what is unfolding prophetically. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16.